Hi, it's Ivy Slater. Thank you for joining me here today on Slater Success Live. I have the pleasure of introducing somebody I've known through networking, through business, through working with clients together for so many years. Uh, Janet Falk is a communications professional, professional with more than 30 years experience in-house as a consultant and public relations in agencies, as chief strategist of fall communications and research. She manages proactive media outreach and has secured placement of executives and events in local, national, and international print and broadcast media. I know I consistently share, share, uh, share Janet as a resource on a regular basis for every person I know who says, hey, Ivy, how do you get in the media? What do you need to do? How do you need to know? What do you need to know? What do we do about this? And I was like, have you spoken to Janet lately? So Janet, thank you so much for joining me here today. I'm so happy to be here and to share with you some insights. Let's get started. <laughs> Absolutely. Share a little bit. You know, I, I'm a businesswoman at heart. It, you know, it, it, uh, complete disclosure, you know, that I think love business so much. Here's my first, how did this, how did this become your sweet spot? How did this become your career? Oh, this is a very long story. So let's cut to the chase. Um, if you go to my website, you'll see that my logo is the letter F nestled inside an octagon. And I chose that because I'm not a round peg. I'm not a square peg. I'm an octagonal peg. And I don't fit the mold of many other of my colleagues in public relations and marketing communications. So my background includes higher education. I was a professor of Spanish language and literature. Then I got, I that. it doesn't come up in conversation very often. <laughs> Uh, then I got an education in a sort of executive MBA program at New York University, and I started working on Wall Street. And I saw that in my conversations with investor relations professionals that there was an affinity to my teaching background, which was conveying information and trying to persuade people of a point of view. So I took a class and then uh, through networking, through a member of the class, I was hired at a public relations agency. And I worked in public relations and marketing communications on Wall Street for a number of years. And then one thing led to another and I worked at a museum and I worked for a trade association. And my last job as a hired professional was at a public relations agency whose principal client was a law firm. Okay. So that's how I transitioned from education to Wall Street to law. Now I have my own independent practice since 2009, and I work with a variety of clients. I work with attorneys who have a solo practice or at a small firm. I work with business executives. I work with financial services firms. And I have one client that is a nonprofit. It's a professional women's membership organization, a women, 100 women in finance. So you can see that my experience really has come back together because I am doing communications activity for a Wall Street organization, and I am continuing to dip into my legal experience by working with attorneys. I, I love that. And it's interesting because you said, you know, you're not a circle, you're not a square, you know, you're not that peg, yet it's so interesting how things come full circle. Exactly. It, in, in our careers, in our lives. Right. And, and I do believe that because of my diversified experience, it's really a benefit to my clients because I don't have blinders on where I think like everybody else in the industry. I understand that I have to be able to translate what's going on in the industry to people who are on the sidelines or people who aren't paying attention. So that's the approach that I take. I want to get my arms around the business and understand what it is, how they operate, who they need to communicate with, what is the solution that they represent to someone who has a problem, and how can I get my client in front of that person so that they will say, yes, they understand my problem. I should contact this person because they're going to help me solve my problem. 
So having a diversified background means that I have different tools at my disposal in different ways of analyzing the situation that many times people who are in a situation are only looking at it from their own perspective. It's so true. Like we're, we run businesses where we, and we, and we kind of go forward with blinders on and we're, and we're, and we miss by doing that so much peripherally. Um, and especially in, in, in strategy and marketing and, and communication strategy, you know, we're trying to get to the finish line so often, even when we're extending that finish line and we, we need to take those blinders off and see where opportunity is. And you help your clients with that so much. Right, right. Because you're speaking the same language to each other. I often think that people live within the four walls of their own house. And so my role is to open up the doors and windows and bring in some fresh air and say, you people inside don't realize that the world outside is oblivious to what it is that's going on in here. And you have to speak to them in the language that they understand. So let's figure out how we can tackle that. And viewers, as you're scrolling through LinkedIn, this is the perfect opportunity to get those questions answered. Janet and I are going to be live and we're going to be chatting away here. You have a comment, something resonates with you. Whatever question comes up, please feel free to put it in the chat. And Janet and I are here to be your resource. So when you start working with a client, what are some of the first steps you help them with? So I like to do two things. One is I like to do an audit of what are their communications resources. So we look at their website, we looked at their newsletter, we look at the news coverage that they've gotten to date, we look at uh, any other reports or materials or you know lead magnets, tip sheets and so on that they're giving away. And we wanna make sure that we are speaking to the audience in a language that the audience is open to hearing. We can't be using acronyms and, and insider jargon. So I like to perform initially this audit, which is, is in more detail, but you, you get the basics here. And then I want to be thinking about the way that a reporter thinks. So I like to think about the five W's, right? So Ivy, you know what the five W's are, right? Uh, I'm, I'm, do, you, do you see my brain saying, okay, which file is that in right now? Why don't you share that with us? Okay, so that's who, what, when, where, and why, right? So this Who, is the why, way- when, where, and why. Right. So, so if this anybody's is, taking notes in this chat, you might want to write that down. Right. So this is the way this translates in terms of your, um, your presence uh, in person, your digital presence, and your, your outreach, whether it's to your marketing uh, contacts or, or to the media. So the first question is who, right? Who is it that you are and who is it that you're trying to reach? Right? So you want to be clear about that. Then the next question is what? What is the situation or the problem that that person is experiencing? And the next question is also what? What do you want them to do? So do you want them to go to your website? Do you want them to call you? Do you want them to show up at an event? Do you want them to download a report? Do you want them to subscribe to your newsletter? So. Who is the person you're trying to reach? What is it that they are thinking about? And what is it that you want them to do so that they can know that you represent a solution to whatever that problem is? And I'm going to jump in here for a second because it's so often we forget that second one, that third one, that third one. What is the problem you solve and where do you want them to go? And I talk to clients about that all the time as well. And we come from two different approaches and in, in that way, but it's the same thing. Um, I'm always after my clients, are you being specific? And exactly what I'm hearing you say is like, did you want them to download that tip sheet or do you want them to open a video? Do you want them to open the newsletter? Do you want them to go to the website? And are you actually leading them there? Or are you just being broad or in essence vague? Right, right. If you want them to go somewhere, you have to provide that link. 
Because you have to direct them. You have to tell them to click. Click the link below. Right. You have to. You have to say click here. If you want them to subscribe, then you have to make it easy for them to subscribe in that moment. Don't send them to another page because they're going to get lost and forget about it. They're going to get a phone call. They're going to get distracted. It's not going to happen. So, uh, so who is it you're trying to reach? What is it that's on their mind? And what do you want them to do? Now we come to when. When is this going to be an issue? In other words, is there some sort of deadline that you have to be in compliance with as a business operator? Or is the law going to change? Or is it related to taxes? And so April 15th is coming up very quickly. So when is something that may be not time sensitive. It may be that all year round, you should be thinking about what are the best practices to address this particular situation. Now we come to where. Where is this person looking for information? Because it's not always on social media. Sometimes they might be looking in the local business journal. Sometimes they might be looking in the local national, the local newspaper or a national newspaper like the Wall Street Journal. They might be looking at an industry newsletter. So you want to find out where it is that they're looking for information so that you will be in that place. Now we come to why. And Ivy, I'm sure you will agree. This is the most important question, right? Why do we why, do what we do? Why, why does do anyone care? Why does anyone care about what Ivy Slater and Janet Falk and anyone else has to say? Because whether you're dealing with an individual or a business owner or a corporate executive, they all want the same thing. They want to save time, save money, and make more money. And your job, no matter what role you have, whether you're providing a product or you're providing a service, is to convince that person that if they only followed your sage advice, they would save time, save money, or make more money. Now, there's one exception to this, and that is if you operate a restaurant. Yeah. Then, then you want people to enjoy life, right? Because they're not saving time and saving money. They're spending time, spending money in your restaurant, but they will enjoy life. So that, that's the exception. So and there you have the the who goes, and it where. goes back to exactly what I'm hearing you say is what is the end goal? Right. Do you, you know, in in growing businesses, we want to either make more money, save more money, save time, you know, work efficiently, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, and I hear in restaurants, it's a different. What is the driving force? But it's still it's it's the same. It's pertinent, mm-hmm. and it goes back to ha- having me think. I say, I think probably a thousand times a day, are we, are you being specific? Can we be more specific? Mm-hmm. And that is exactly what I'm hearing you delineate. Uh, be clear. And if you're not clear, get help with it. Right. Right. And so as you help your clients, I know you work with a lot of clients. Uh, we, we have uh, collaborated a whole bunch. We've been on panels together about media exposure. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some people think it is uh, people that, oh, you know, it's, is it egocentric? Is it, is it, or is it egocentric? Is it marketing centric? Is it good business? How do you help your clients think about why media exposure is important? I often think that someone is going to be in the news story. And if you know all about it, why shouldn't it be you? Why should it be somebody else, right? And this is a a, a presentation I often give. It's called Why Her and Not Me, How You Can Be the One Reporters Call. So there are a lot of reasons why people want to be in the news. And it's not only to get new clients, right? Because, of course, we all want new business, right? But there are other reasons that you want to be seen talking about timely issues so that people will want to get in touch with you. So, for example, uh, you want to be top of mind with your referral sources, Because when they see you talking about an issue, they'll think, I have a client who has this problem. I should put them in touch with Ivy Slater or Janet Falk, right? So you want to be top of mind with your referral sources. You also might want to be known as the person who handles a certain kind of issue. So you want to be projecting your brand and projecting your reputation so that when that issue arises, everyone will think of you because you are the one who everybody knows, 
Yes. Maybe you want to build alliances with other like-minded issue uh, organizations or, or individuals. So say you serve on the board of a nonprofit, you want to be seen in the news talking about the issue so that other organizations will want to partner with you because you're all advocating for a similar perspective. Maybe you want to recruit employees. Everybody wants to work for that company that's always in the news, right? So, you know, why shouldn't that be you? And you want to keep in touch with your lapsed contacts. I'm sure you've had the experience where people came out of the woodwork because they saw you mentioned in some publication, people that you hadn't been in touch with for a very long time, people you went to college with or, or people that you worked with in a previous job, former clients, and so on. Now, I often say reporters call the people that they know. They don't call someone that they've never heard of. And if you want to be a speaker at a conference, who do you think conference organizers call? They call the people that they see talking about issues in the news. So it's not just getting clients. It's building alliances, being top of mind with your referral sources, attracting employees, establishing and, and solidifying your brand. And, and so on. So I want people to be aware that being seen in the news is not a one and done, that it's something that you're going to cultivate over time because it's going to continue to attract uh, interest and you know contacts from, from many people in your circles. It's so true of helping staying top of mind. Uh, I, I can't tell you how many people I've known for years and years and years and years in business, whether it be Slater Success back when I was still in the printing world for over 20 years. Um, and when I'm highlighted somewhere, people will say, oh, Ivy, I just saw you. And sometimes it's a reconnection of a personal relationship. Sometimes it's a reconnection of a business relationship. Sometimes it's both situations. Sometimes it's a referral. It comes down as such a great asset. And people don't see the level of importance in, in brand recognition there. You know, they're, they're so busy doing what's next in their company. And you do like the things, you, you know, like, okay, I have to get a newsletter out or I have to pop onto LinkedIn a few times, you know, once or twice a day. But the media component really helps brand recognition and build brand awareness that I think is an incredibly important piece. And I'm so excited when I have my clients talk to you. Great. Well, we'll continue to work together in that way. Um, but I, I read last night a very interesting report which talked about how people are getting their news. And it turns out that of these marketing professionals, which were uh, about 100, but let's just say, they were getting their news from seeing posts of articles on LinkedIn. So think about that. Um, it's not one and done because anytime that you get a media mention, then you want to merchandise it. You want to include it in many other venues. So you can share it on LinkedIn, you can put it on your website, you can put it in your newsletter, you can use the topic as fodder for an article in an industry newsletter, you can use the topic as a subject for a workshop or a panel discussion, and, and, and you should also take the link to that article and put it in your email signature. Ivy, I bet you send 100 emails a day, right? Easily, yes. Easily, right? And think of that as your personal real estate. Every time you send an email, you're not only sending your name and your phone number and your tagline and your website URL, you could be sending your next speaking engagement. You could be sending an article in which you were quoted. You could be saving, sending a, a, a newsletter that people could be subscribing to. So think about the news opportunity as not only putting you in front of people, but the way that you could be, as I say, merchandising it and making it available across other platforms. You know, I, I said this in the video that I posted before, um, a little bit before we went live. And I, and I said in the video, you know, ladies and gentlemen, every time I talk to Janet, I have a pen in my hand, not far from paper and taking notes, because there's always an idea that I find that I could take action on. 
Now, I, I am established business. We do well. And, and I am still learning. We're all still learning. And I think that's part of one of the most key components here. Like I, we have a go-to in our signature, but gee, I just thought of like, gee, I haven't updated that in a while. Hmm. You know, that what can we be doing for our brands? What can we be doing for our businesses? And viewers, as you're scrolling through, if something resonates with you, feel free to be pop it in, as I'll always say, I call it an aha. Um, pop it in the comments and let's see what's resonating in our conversation and use this as an opportunity to come on and ask any questions of Janet or myself on your opportunity to create a strategy for your business, your brand, and using all of Janet's tips that she is just like flowing here. If I, You could have like three pages already. I And I hope you're good at getting them down. Um, I'm also going to do a little bit of a shout out. If this is resonating with you, if you're finding this helpful, take this video on LinkedIn and share it forward to your community. Be a giver, not just a taker. So Janet, as we're on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit about um, using LinkedIn as an asset in our marketing. Absolutely. Right. So one thing that I noticed that people underplay is their headline. People don't understand that no one is looking for an owner or a founder or a partner. They're looking for someone who can identify and solve their problem, right? So LinkedIn gives you 220 characters in your headline and you should make the most of it. Don't put your title and don't put the name of your company because people know that already about you. They want to know what you can do for them. Ivy, do you listen to the radio? You listen to the world's greatest radio station, WIIFM. <laughs> What's in it for me? Exactly. Exactly. Love so, that radio station. <laughs> right. Right. So that's the radio station that everybody listens to. And so your LinkedIn headline should speak to the issues that someone else is facing so that when they're looking for a matrimonial attorney who can help them resolve a custody dispute, or they're looking for someone who can help them better manage their cash flow in their uh, cosmetics business, you wanna make sure that you're going to be found. And you're not gonna be found if your headline says, attorney, partner, owner, founder, nobody wants one of those. And I will tell you, um, first of all, we have a little a LinkedIn user who is weighing in and you are right. I don't see your name here, but you're saying Janet is, in, is an incredible giver and a person who unselfishly empowers women. And oh, wow, Janet, I couldn't find a better description of you. Thank you. Always good to hear. <laughs> yeah, because Janet will hop on the phone and she gets involved in organizations and we are involved in organizations together and she doesn't show up as a, as a wallflower. And, and I have to give you kudos for that. When you show up, you show up at 100%. And a lot of people in this world kind of skate through organizations and skate through the many things, and they kind of stand in the background. You don't just talk about being out there, but you play big and you play bold. And I happen to respect that enormously. So just want to say kudos to you on there. No, I appreciate that. Let me point something out, which is now that we're going back to conferences and in-person yeah. meetings, right? after being on Zoom for, you know, for two years here, there's going to be opportunities for people to step forward, right? When it comes time to divide up into the groups, volunteer and say, I'm going to take the notes, right? So you can comment from time to time, but the, basically when everyone goes back into the main room, they're gonna give you the microphone and you're gonna stand up and say, my group talked about X, Y, and Z. And then the whole room is going to see you. So you don't have to be so vocal in the large group if that's going to intimidate you. But in the small group, you can be actively participating as a secretary and then report back to the main group. I think this is an opportunity that people ought to take more advantage of because as we're going to be going into in-person meetings, we're going to be having these smaller group discussions and then wanting to share our insights. I cannot agree more. It, it is so true. Um, even when we did the breakout Zoom rooms and they're like, okay, somebody lead us like, oh yeah, I'll do that. 
Mm -hmm. And why? Because then they're like, oh, what was the consensus in, you know, the group one or group five? And it's like, oh, the, the consensus in our group is mm -hmm. any time that you can appear as a leader and gain that visibility is an asset for your brand. Um, right. A LinkedIn user is asking a great question and just wants clarity on this. So you're an so you're advocating to put a skill in your headline rather than a title. So Janet, let's let, let's be clear on it. Is it a skill or is it a problem you solve in your business? I think it depends on who you're looking to reach, right? Uh, you know, uh, you know. Let me go back to the example I gave. You know, if you are a, a matrimonial law attorney, then you can say, you know, matrimonial attorney focused on you know, custody disputes and, and so on. So, so you're, you're very specific about your profession and also about the kind of problem that you solve, right? The other example that I gave was, uh, you know, improving your cash flow in the cosmetics industry. So there you're targeting a specific industry and the functional area that you're, you're focused on. But if this person would like to get in touch with me, uh, my email address is Janet at Janet L as love, F -A -L -K com, And I offer a complimentary 30 minute strategic communications consultation. So please feel free to reach out to me either on LinkedIn or, or via my website and we can chat and, you know, take a look at your, your, um, your LinkedIn headline and anything else going on with your LinkedIn profile. And I guarantee two ideas. Love that. And viewers, as we come to a close of Slater Success Live, uh, Janet, great, there's the greatest way to reach out to you. Email, share your website again, please. So my website is Janet, my name, L as love, F-A-L-K dot com. And uh, I want to point out that I have a monthly newsletter and I have a lot of free resources, sample letters and, and, and e-books and uh, sample public relations and marketing communications materials. So you can go to my website, JanetLFALK.com and peruse the material there in the resources. Terrific. And Janet, I always remember to reach also reach out to Janet via LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a great resource to communicate, stay in touch. And for all of those viewers who've been perusing through today's session, please check your LinkedIn profile. And if you're unclear if it is really what you want it to be or what you should be, reach out to Janet and get the help. Janet, thank you so much for your time, your insight, and your brilliance. My pleasure, Ivy. It's been a lot of fun. I've enjoyed it. Thank you. And viewers, stay tuned. We're going to be back with more Slater Success Live in April. I'm taking a little bit of a vacation soon. Um, and let us know what was most impactful to you in today's session. What made sense? What are the actions you're going to take? If this, may, if this was helpful to you, please remember to share this forward on your LinkedIn platform to make a bigger impact and a ripple effect. See you next time.